by grace by grace hear me good it's only jesus can convince you god is a god for everybody in the business of forgiveness from since the world began Praise the Lord, everybody. Our God is great, and he is greatly to be praised. It is a privilege to be into his presence one more time. I read in your hearing Psalms chapter 150. It says, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. And then he ends it saying, let everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath, praise the Lord. This morning we have a choice to worship and praise our God. And he gives us clear reasons. He is the one who has done excellent things among us. He is the one who has performed mighty acts. He is the almighty God. And he has given us breath in our body and life in our lungs to praise him. So this morning, as we gather together, I'm going to invite you to do that, to put your hands together, to lift your voice onto God, our God who was great and greatly to be praised. This is our choice. This is our choice this morning. Come on, put your hands together, church.
Say, I command my soul to bless the Lord. 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 He said, So, so bless the Lord. So bless the Lord. So bless the Lord. So bless the Lord. Put your hands together. Come on. Hey. to sing his praise. I command my voice to, to give him praise. I command my hands to give him praise. I command my hands to give him praise. I command my hands to give him praise. Hands, give him praise. Hands, give him praise. Hands, give him praise. Give him praise, hands give him praise, and I command my hands to give him praise. I command my hands to give him praise. I command my hands to give him praise. I command my hands to give him come on, say hands, hands give him praise. Hands give him To leap for joy, I command my feet to leap for joy. Yes, I command my 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 feet to leap for joy. I command my feet to leap for joy. Come on, say feet, feet, leap for joy. Say, hands praise him, hands give him praise, hands give him praise, hands give him praise, hands. Come on, let's praise him with the clapping of our hands. Hey. We give you praise, Jesus. Yes, we do. We offer it up. We offer it up. Come on, clap your hands onto your saber. This is what we come to do, praise him. Come on, clap your hands on ye people, clap, clap. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. For if you're standing on the solid rock And you know the power that you got We say, Satan, you can't prevail Satan, you're bound to fail Yes, if you're standing on the solid rock And you know the power that you've got Come on, declare it Satan, you can't prevail Satan, you're bound to fail. Come on, praise and praise. Don't let us praise the Lord. Everybody, praise the Lord. So let us praise the Lord. Everybody, praise the Lord. Come on, lift them up. Say, praise the Lord. Everybody, praise the Lord. Church, let us praise. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Yes, if you're standing on the solid rock, and you know the power that you got, you can say, Satan, you can't prevail. Satan, you're bound to fail. Declare it one more time. Yes, if you're 
standing on the solid rock And you know the power that you've got You can't say Satan, you can't prevail Satan, you're about to, I'm gonna lift my voice and I will praise the Lord Everybody, praise the Lord Let us praise the Lord Everybody, praise him. Don't hold it back this morning. Come on, let us praise the Lord. Everybody, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody, praise the Lord one more time. Yes, if you're standing on the solid rock and you know the power that you've got, you can say, Satan, you can't prevail. Oh, yes, yeah, Satan, you're bound to fail. And if you're standing on the south in a rock, and you know the power that you've got, you can say, Satan, you can't prevail. Satan, you're bound to fail. Satan, you can't prevail. Satan, you can't prevail. Satan, you're bound to fail one more time. Satan, you can't prevail. Satan, you're bound to fail. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad we know how this story ends. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We have the victory. Oh, glory be to the Lamb of God. It is in your word. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. Take the glory out of our lives. Hallelujah. Take the glory out of our lives this morning, Jesus. We are always victorious in you, Jesus. So we will live for you, Jesus. In my life, please be glorified. Lord, be glorified. As you fight for us, I pray that in my life, Lord, be glorified. When you look at me, you are glorified. Lord, in my life, please be magnified. Lord, be glorified. Can you pray that with me this morning? Lord, in our lives, Jesus, be glorified. For be glorified. You get the glory. You get the praise. You take the honor. Lord, I just want to say thank you. Lord, you get the glory. And you get the praise. You take the honor, for I just want to say thank you. In my life, be glorified, be glorified. So you get the glory, Lord, we give you the praise. Please take the honor, Lord, we say thank you. You get the glory, you get the praise. We give you all the honor as we say Thank you, we just want to say thank you. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you. It's real simple, church. Just say thank you for all that he's done. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you're about to do in our lives. We say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We don't have to wait till the battle's over. We will lift our hands and we'll say, hey, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You are a faithful God. You are a faithful God. I will say, thank you. Thank you. In our lives, Lord, be glorified, be glorified in my life, be glorified, be glorified. I'm going to divert a little bit. Search me, oh God, and know my heart, I pray. Try me, oh Savior, know my thoughts, I pray. There be some we can ways in me and cleanse me from every sin and set me. If that's your desire, can you sing it to him one more time? Search me, oh God, search me, oh God. Try me, oh Savior, and know my thoughts, I pray. Lord, see if there be some wicked ways in me. single sin and set me free. Can we have the other verse? Search me, oh God. Know my heart today. I'm asking you to try me, oh say. Please know my thoughts, I pray. See me some wicked ways in me. That's what we're asking this morning. Oh, Holy Spirit, let me from every sin. To be there, there a blessed 
Lord of everything, we bless you. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We recognize your holiness and your majesty this morning. And we confess our best is as filthy rags before you. Thank you for the weight of your glory. Thank you for how holy you are. And I thank you that a step into your presence will kill our sinful flesh. And so, Lord, we thank you for an opportunity to come before the Holy King and be changed from unrighteous people into the holy people you desire us to be. Thank you, King Jesus, for our chance to leave here new people because we've encountered your glory that changes us. Thank you, God, for our chance to look at you and become like you. Thank you for our chance to hear your word, to feel your spirit, and to change our ways and become like you. We are people who are desperate for victory in our lives. And the victory comes by accessing your presence and becoming who you want us to become. So Jesus, we beg you, sir, would you be so kind as to change us today? We don't want to be the same people we were coming into this place. But God, we want to be changed into your image from glory to glory. Oh God. I pray in the name of Jesus that God, every desire that we have, every moment of temptation we give into, every weakness of our flesh, today it will be cut off, today it will be confronted, today we will be strengthened, and today we'll be the victorious people that you need us to be. Thank you that your presence makes the difference. Your glory is the difference maker, Jesus. And so we are here for you. We are here to bow down. We are here to raise our hands. We are here to raise our voices. We're here to kill our flesh. We're here to offer our bodies as living sacrifices, God, so that we can leave here looking more like you and less like ourselves. Thank you for the invitation to come. We accept your invitation. And Lord, with offerings of sacrifice, God, with offerings of praise, with offerings of repentance, with offerings of contrition, with offerings of our tears, with offerings of our humbled posture, God, we lay ourselves back before your altar and say, burn up everything, Jesus, that does not make you happy and leave only what's left, God. May that thing live to be your glory. We present our bodies as living sacrifices today to be holy and acceptable every day of the week, to be holy and acceptable. God, we don't want this just to be a Sunday thing. God, we want to live at a place of surrender and obedience so that when there's that tug of war between our flesh and your spirit, we say yes to you and no to what we want. Help us to live to make you happy, Jesus. Help us to live to make you happy, Lord. You have done exceedingly abundantly above all we can even ask or think. You're worthy of our loyalty. You're worthy of our devotion. And today we come back one more day, Jesus, just to get it right. Correct us with your word. Let it be like a mirror who shows us who we truly are. God, I pray for everybody here who is not a Christian, who does not fully understand what it means to draw near. I thank you that your spirit is pulling them closer to you. 
I thank you that you made the first move. You told us, God, that you came down from heaven to earth to give up your own life as a sacrifice that the way might be opened up so that we could be saved. Thank you for your invitation. So I pray for every man, every woman, every boy and girl here who has not changed their heart, who has not given themselves fully over to you. I pray today would be the day of decision for them. I pray, God, that you would use the songs, the preaching, the scripture, the presence of the Holy Spirit, the weight of your glory, just to usher them closer and closer to you to the point where they say, yes, Jesus, I will follow you regardless of the cost for the rest of my life. Thank you for bringing them here. Thank you for having them log on. Thank you for those who will hear this through delayed broadcasts. Thank you, Jesus, for the movement of your spirit who is calling people to salvation before the time is too late. Thank you. And may people in this congregation be ready for your imminent return. I bless you for the healing that has been broken over this congregation. I thank you, God, for the streams of living water that is over us, hovering over us. God, I thank you. I praise you, Jesus, for the miracles we're receiving in our bodies, in our minds. God, as we wait in your presence, I thank you that you're doing a mighty work that will marvel even our physicians, that will marvel and exceed our expectations. God, we thank you for what you're doing. God, may those that wait on you, may their strength be renewed. God, I pray that you would touch the sick bodies, the weak bodies, the, the failing bodies, the failing health, the limitations. Lord God, I thank you that power and might are in your hand and there is nothing impossible for you. So Jesus, thank you for your willingness to do the impossible things. So I pray that you would heal your children. Remember our loved ones who are in need of healing. I pray that you would heal them and let your goodness lead them to repentance. Remember those in our fellowship who are on the sick and shut and list, those who can't be here but want to be here but for ailments they can't. I pray that you bless them. Remember Brother Russell and others, God, who are listening and logging on. I pray that you would allow the Holy Spirit to minister to them even at home. And God, and may they experience the same glory that we're experiencing here. Thank you for your word that's going to go forth today. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you that you're preparing your church to be victorious and to use the weapons that you've given us so that we are not inconsistent people. We can be strong and mighty people. Bless your servant. Bless dad. I pray you, how God, help him to run and not get weary. Continue to give him vision and insight. God, I curse the voice of every enemy. God, I pray that you would increase him greatly and make him stronger. God, I pray you bless him with insight in your word, fresh revelation, and knowledge every day. Thank you for what is in store for everybody who has stepped into your presence today. Thank you for the good things you have in mind for every one of us today. God, may your plan be executed today. May we hear your voice today. May we walk away from sin today. May stuff be broken off of people today. And may your people walk in the victory you have ordained for us to walk in. Thank you for everybody in our congregation who is waiting on a miracle. God, I pray that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to us. Jesus, in every situation, I ask that you throw your weight around. The cattle on a thousand hills are yours. God, you make something out of nothing. So in every situation, God, I pray you create for your sons and for your daughters that you would prove yourself one more time to be Jehovah Jireh, our provider. That's who you introduced yourself to us to be. And that's by faith who we're believing you will be. Thank you for your presence today. We love you for your nearness. We love you for your glory. And we thank you, God, for confirming your will and your pleasure with this church, with your presence over us. Be glorified in everything. May your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Kavar. 
Welcome to our Sunday morning worship. The Lord is truly in this place, and he is speaking. I pray that your hearts and your minds are at the place to receive what he has for you this morning. The past couple of weeks, Bishop has been increasing our focus on being a missional-minded church, that our duty on this earth is to be the light of the world. And as, this, as, as a body, we I hope that we are receiving that message and we are carrying it out in our daily lives. And if you are like me and you want that to be your witness, I pray that you'll be able to sing this song with me this morning as we say to the Lord, Lord, let my life be a light shining out through the night. There was work to do, the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. The Lord says, send those who are willing to work. Let's join our hands together and sing this song. Live, bless the Lord in the light of thy word. Let my life be a light on the hill. Leading souls now astray to the straight narrow way. Help me do some good deed while I live. Let my life be a light shining out through the night. May I help struggling ones to the fold, spreading share everywhere to the side and the low. May my light be a light to some soul. Give me wisdom and power every day and every hour. Let me drink from the fountain above. Guide my footsteps aright through the dark, stormy night. Give me peace, give me joy, give me love. Oh, let my light be a light shining out through the night. May I help strong in ones to the fold. I'm gonna be a spreading chair everywhere to the side and below. Let my life be a light to some soul. Give me souls for the higher and let my life be on fire, shining out to the world as a guide. Oh, help me rescue someone sinking now with no hope. And in heaven we shall ever abide. Oh, Lord, let my life be a light shining out through the night. May I help struggling ones to the fold. I'm going to be a spreading chair everywhere to the side and the low. Let my life be a light to some oh, Let my life be a light shining out through the night. May I help strong in ones to the fold. I want a spreading chair everywhere to the sad and the low. Let my life be a light to some oh, Let my light be a light shining out through the night. May I help struggling ones to the fold. I want to be spreading chair everywhere to the sad and the low. Let my light to some soul Oh let my life be a light shining down through the night May I help some little ones to the fold I want to be the spreading chair everywhere to the sad and the low Let my life be a light to some soul Praise the Lord Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Happy Sunday morning, City of Faith. Praise the name of Jesus. It's a wonderful thing to be in the house of the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy is endured forever. Praise the name of Jesus. 
this morning I greet the Holy Spirit who is ahead of my life. I greet our Bishop, Bishop Dr. C.A. Reed, Minister Reed, all ministers, saints of the Most High God. I greet you this morning in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. By the, by the grace of God, I am privileged this morning to extend to one and all a very special welcome to our divine family worship service this morning. Praise the name of Jesus. Bishop Reed, Minister Reed, along with the families, ministers, officers, and members of this church and congregation, we warmly welcome you into the presence of the Lord today. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Special recognition to our first-time worshipers here in person and those who are worshiping with us in the church without walls this morning. Praise the name of Jesus. We are blessed to have several first-time visitors here. And at this time, I'd just like to make special mention of them by name. We just want to recognize you and know that your presence here is highly appreciated. We want to recognize Miss Britannia Mullings this morning in our house. If that's you, raise your hand so we can welcome you, Miss Mullings, in the name of Jesus. We recognize Miss Eastman in our presence this morning. We are blessed to have Mr. Clark. He is the son of Su our Suzette Foster, Sister Suzette Foster, who has been fitted with us. God bless you. Praise the name of Jesus. We have Mr. Olga Willoughby and Tyler, Mr. Tyler in the house this morning. We also have Mr. Anthony Mullins. We have, thank you. We have Mr. Miss, Miss Faircloth in the house. Praise the name of Jesus. And we also have Miss Vaughn. Thank you for coming out to worship with us. Know that we appreciate your presence here. Praise the Lord. In addition, we want to recognize the fine contingent of visitors from the New York Presbyterian Hospital worshiping with us today. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. We thank you for your service to humanity and for being here today. We recognize that you do great work. Praise the name of Jesus. We also recognize today the family of the infant that is to be dedicated after our altar ministry. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. First, all time, first, all our first time visitors, please feel welcomed in the house. Praise the name of Jesus. Uh, please feel free to worship with us during other times of scheduled public serve worship. This evening at 6 p.m. will be our evangelical service. On Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m. will be our Bible study and prayer meeting, and this is done in the hybrid mode. On Fridays at 7.30 p.m., we have youth ministry on Zoom. Praise the name of Jesus. If your schedule does not allow you to attend in person, you can log on to our Zoom address and worship with us. Uh, this information will be posted on our screen. We want to um, pause at this time to mention those who are not able to be in the sanctuary today, but we know they are watching. We recognize you, Brother Russell. We know that you are worshiping with us. Sister Della, you're not here, but we recognize that you're worshiping with us this morning. Um, Sister Carty, Sister Elsa Thomas Thompson, we recognize you. All those who can't be here, and we know you're logging on to worship. God bless you. We pray that you too will be blessed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Today is Grandparents' Day. We honor all our grandparents, and we thank God for your continued labor of love. We pray that all your grandchildren and children will take time out to honor you today. Praise God. Today, we also mark the 21st anniversary of the 9-11 attack on the homeland. We continue to pray for peace and safety and that the Prince of Peace will reign in the hearts and lives of everyone. May God continue to bless our nation. Praise God. Congrat congratulations to those who are celebrating birthdays and joyous occasions this month. May you continue to enjoy the favor of God. For those who are mourning the loss of loved ones or experiencing sorrow, our virtual arm of embrace as we sur surround you today with a virtual arm of embrace. Amen? Amen? Thanks to our prayer partners who labored with us in our all-night virtual prayer meeting last Friday. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. We all know the rich reward that we reap through these prayer meetings. Amen? I encourage each of us to push today. Pray until something happens. Let us push in every era, in prior and in every era of our lives. Amen? Thanks for your support. 
We continue to be grateful to God for those who are helping to carry out the mandate the Lord has given us. We bless God for you in whatever area of ministry that you serve. Please continue to redouble your efforts as we do our part to advance the kingdom of God. Over the past 38 years, a lot has been accomplished. But every day presents new opportunities for working for the Lord. So I encourage each of us to continue to labor in the vineyard. Praise the name of Jesus. Again, this morning, I'd like to say thank you for worshiping with us. Feel welcomed. Please make sure that you have a personal encounter with the Lord through your worship. Thank you for being here again. These are announcements. Please mark your calendars accordingly. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Powell. Jesus declared that I am the way, the truth, and the light, and no man comes unto the Father except through him. There is no compromise. There is no other back entrance in. The Lord declares that no man can come up to the Father except through him. This morning as a church, we know the truth. Despite of what society might say, we know the truth. There is one way to see God. There is a highway to heaven. None can walk up there but the pure in heart. There is a highway to heaven. Those who have been redeemed and blood washed and are living for him, we can say we are walking up the King's Highway. Let's join together and sing that song this morning. Mm -hmm. There is a highway to heaven. None can walk up there but the pure in heart. There is a highway to heaven. I'm walking up the King's Highway. Oh, it is a highway to heaven. None can walk up there. But the pure in heart, it is a highway to heaven. I'm walking up the king's highway. If you're not walking, start while I'm talking. We say, walking up the king's highway. For there'll be a blessing that you'll be confessing if you're walking up the king's highway. Oh, there is a high way to heaven. None can walk up there, but the pure in heart, it is a highway to heaven. Oh, yes, I'm walking up the king's highway. For my way gets brighter and my load gets lighter when I'm walking up the King's Highway. And there's joy in knowing that with Him I'm going when I'm walking up the King's Highway. Oh, there is a highway to heaven. Oh, none can walk up there, but the pure in heart there is a highway. I'm walking up the king's highway You don't have to worry, no you don't have to worry When you're walking up the king's highway Oh yes, Jesus Christ walks beside me Angels should guide me when I'm walking up the king's Come on, listen clear this morning Yeah, there is a highway to heaven But the pure in the heart, there is a highway, a highway to heaven. I am a walking up the king's high. Oh, there is a highway, there's a highway of Jesus. Oh, none can walk up there. But the pure in the heart, it is a highway, a highway to heaven. I'm walking up the king's, casting verse 3 again. Oh, you don't have to worry, no, you don't have to worry when you're walking up the King's Highway. Oh, for Christ will walk beside you, and there'll be angels to guide you when you're walking up the King's Yeah, it is a highway to heaven. None can walk up there. 
but the pure in heart, it is a highway to heaven. I'm walking up the king's highway. It is a highway to heaven. Love can walk up there, but the pure in heart, it is a highway, highway to heaven. I'm walking up the king's highway. It is a highway to hell. Oh, nothing can walk up there. But the pure in heart, it is a highway to heaven. I'm walking up the king's highway. Oh, it is a highway. It's a highway up to heaven. Nothing can walk up there. But the pure in heart, it is a it's a highway up to heaven. I am walking up the king. Hey, it is a highway. It's a highway. It's a highway up to heaven. Oh, I'm gonna walk up there. But the view in heart, it is a highway. It's a highway up to heaven. I'm walking up the king's highway. It is a highway. But none can walk up there. But the pure in heart, it is a highway to heaven. I'm walking up the king's highway. Praise the Lord. At this time, we repeat our vision and doctrinal statement together. This is what it depicts that we believe and hear at City of Faith Church of God. And it reads thus. In the name of Jesus Christ, we proclaim and herald the vision of City of Faith Church of God. We are assembled here for the express purpose of worshiping the true and living God. We uphold our pastor's hand like Aaron and Ur who lifted up Moses' hand when he became weak. We covenant to support our pastor as he is led by God to fulfill the mandate that God has given him. We declared that our God is the creator of heaven and earth and that all things are subjected to him. We are his workmanship. We declare that we are a people who are born again not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed by the word of God, called to show forth his praise, so we let our light shine in this dark world. We hold fast the full counsel of God, revealed in the inspired word, the Bible. We will preach the gospel, practice and teach the sound doctrine of the one true God in three persons, salvation plan for the entire human race, sanctification, justification, complete holiness as a way of life, regeneration, water baptism, the Lord's Supper, washing of the saints' feet, baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues as the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost in filling, Spiritual gifts, signs accompanying the believers, the ministry of evangelism as given to each believer, divine healing, tithing and giving, restitution where possible, the blessed hope of his glorious return, resurrection of the dead unto eternal light for the righteous, and eternal punishment for the wicked. As obedient children of God, we claim all his promises unto ourselves and our generation and those to come. Our children shall grow up and make positive impacts on our world. They shall be the head and not the tail. We rebuke every spirit that comes to disrupt and destroy the family and the institution of marriage as designed by God. No weapons formed against us shall prosper. We render every enemy stronghold powerless. 
we declare that we are a praising, worshiping church. We recognize that everyone is valuable and is the object of God's love. Therefore, we will do our part to edify one another, call sinners to Christ, and minister to the total person. Our vision is well beyond these walls. Our focus is on God. We shall remain a people whose praise shall go up to God, for he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We thank God for this church and the operation of the fivefold ministry in our midst. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We have the victory. And though our vision tarries, it shall come to pass. Amen. We shall remain standing as we read our morning scripture, which is taken from 2 Corinthians 10, reading from verse 1 to 5, and I will read in your hearing. And the word of the Lord reads thus. Now I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am base among you, but being absent am bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be, but I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence wherewith I think to be bold, walked according to, to be bold against some which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty true God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Here ended a portion of the reading of God's holy word. We honor the word of God by saying, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, now it ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Exalted Green. We have now entered a time of giving our offertory worship. Um, it is such a privilege that God has afforded us the opportunity to have this church, that this church has stood for as long as it has and is continuing to thrive. We thank God for his bountiful blessings upon his people. Now we have the opportunity to give back God back a portion of what he has given to us. Um, let us give that cheerfully, um, for God has truly lavished his blessings upon us. I'll read in your hearing Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 through 11. It reads, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye said, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and in offering. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now, herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. We give God praise for his word. The ushers will guide you in the sanctuary, and the ways to give will be on the screen. Keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. Keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. For there's a race that I must run, and there are victories to be won. Oh, give me power, Lord, every hour. Oh, keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. Keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. Keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. For there's a race that I must run, and there are victories to be won. So give me power, Lord. 
Heavenly Father, we bless, we bless your holy name. We thank you this morning, O oh God, for the privilege that we have through your son, Jesus Christ, where we can bring an offering into your house to worship and adore you this morning. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you may bless this tithe and offering of your people. 
Oh God, I pray, oh God, as we use it here to further your kingdom here on earth, God. I pray, oh God, that you may help us, oh God, to stay the journey, oh God. As we look to thee, we give you honor, we give you praise, and we tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm so glad this morning that I found my hope in Jesus. That despite of all the things that this world may throw our way, we have an anchor. We have hope. And his name is Jesus. It is time for the word. It's a privilege to be a part of this ministry, a privilege to be a part of this church where we can receive from the hand of the Lord week after week to strengthen our journey. Um, the Lord's messenger this morning is none other than our bishop, Dr. C.A. Reed. I'm so grateful for his ministry, so grateful for his integrity. And we, as he preaches, we pray and we listen. Lord, speak to our hearts this morning. We'll sing together this song that just says, I know the Lord will make a way for me. If I live a holy life, shun the wrong and do the right. The Lord is faithful to every promise. He will make a way.
Say amen. Spirit of the living God, we adore you today. We magnify you for who you are. We bless you for being in this place. Thank you for speaking to our hearts, inspiring our minds, filling our vessels. Lord, all the honor and the glory belong to you. Hallelujah. Now take us beyond the realm of ourselves. In the name of Jesus. And bring us to the place where we can hear you again. Hallelujah. As you speak to us. Rebuke every distraction of the plan of the enemy. And set captives free. And bring about a change as we live for you. In Jesus name. Amen. And amen. The Lord bless you. you may be seated in his presence. Recognition of the Holy Ghost. The head of my life. My keeper. My source. My strength. Give all the honor to him. Our worship leader, Brother Karan, God bless you. Amen. My partner in life and ministry, Minister Claudette Reed, God bless her. Faithfulness, dedication, devotion to the things of God. A woman who exemplifies strength and stability. And for that, we honor you today. All our ministers in place, praise the Lord. Amen. Our officers, our deacons, our members of our church. And all of you, members of the congregation who are here today, I greet you in the name of the Lord. And those who are joining us on social media, I'm grateful to God for you. I recognize that today we have the brethren in Grand, from Grand Cayman connecting with us live in their worship. So we welcome them today. And those who will come by delayed broadcasting from Anguilla, from Jamaica, wherever you're contacting us, wherever you're contacting us from, we give the Lord praise for you. Amen. Whatever the means of uh, you're using to be in touch with us, I say to you, God bless you. It's a great pleasure to see our friends from the New York Presbyterian Hospital. 
Am I saying it right? Could you please stand and be acknowledged? I know they call your names again, but we have friends in many places, and I, I just want you to know how we appreciate you. Yes, 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 yes. That's all right. Go ahead, Brother Micklin. You can stand with that group, too, because you draw the crowd today. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. We want you to know we're praying for you, especially on this day, 9-11. Praise the Lord. Those who are working in the healthcare, amen, field, we really appreciate you. We want you to know that our prayers are with you, amen, as you battle in that front. And all our visitors, we are glad for you. Praise God. But, amen, we want our brethren to know that we appreciate you, especially those who stood with us or have been standing with us. On Friday night, we had a great time in prayer. Amen. And the blessing of the Lord, amen, doth make rich. Amen. Minister Kavar traveled from, amen, Michigan this morning to be here. Got your early flight, and so we are happy for you. Just glad for Jesus. Amen. Amen. We have been dealing with a series of message some time ago entitled Winning, Walking in Victory. Walking in Victory by Using the Weapon of our Warfare. Walking in Victory. Victorious walk. Uh, we are on a three weeks uh, a sled now. The first week we talk about as a soldier, you've got to endure hardness. If you're going to win, you've got to endure hardness as a soldier. You've got to be patient as a, as, a, as a farmer. And you'll have to also be as magnanimous as an athlete. So the first week we talk about winning as a soldier. As a soldier, endure hardness. Amen. And we talk about also as a farmer, you must be patient. And also as an athlete, you've got to be magnanimous. Then we talked last week about the weapon. We read this scripture from uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse uh, 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To the putting down of stronghold, casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above God. We understand and we declare that all of us are in the fight of our life. It's a daily survival. And if you're not there, you're going to be there soon. Every day we have to make choices. And my choice is always to win. But I'm not winning in the flesh. I'm not involved in a temporal struggle where we are using carnal weapon. We leave that to Mr. Putin and Mr. Zelensky and whoever else. Let them fight in that. Our weapon is not carnal. It is mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. And we are not fighting against each other. We are fighting against the devil, the unseen force that has been let loose ever since creation. He recognizes and he said, I can't, I have lost one round, but I'm going down to make battle, to make war on the seed. So from that day until now, Satan is making war. The Bible says he crouches and he crouches and every opportunity he gets he punxes on those who are vulnerable. If you allow him to, he will inhabit your body. He will take your mind. He will take your mouth. He will take your motivation. He'll take your highest motivation and he will mess it up. And you become a caveat or can do it for him. But thank God in our last series, we outlined some weapon that we have. Amen, that we can win. We can win with. God has given us some weapon. He says here in the book of Second Chronicles, of Second Corinthians, the weapon of our warfare is not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. Last week, Sunday, we dealt with one of the weapons. And the weapon that we dealt with was the weapon of prayer. God has given us the means Weapon of prayer so we can win every battle. Everything you go to, every challenge that you confront, as long as you pray and believe God, you will win. Let me say it again. Every battle that you face, every giant you face, every enemy you confront, as long as you pray 
sincerely pray, and your heart is directed aright, you will win. Amen. You'll take a few black eyes, a few bruises, but you're going to get up and you're going to shake yourself off and you're going to say, I'm a winner. For we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. Why do we win? Because Jesus already declared us winners. When he gave his life on Calvary, he says, I have already won. And because I've won, you can win also. So there had no temptation taken you, whereby it's not common. But he with the temptation has made a way to escape. We urge you last week to use the weapon of prayer. Don't just talk about it. Don't just sing about it. Don't just pray about it. Don't just uh, uh, preach about it, but do it. Get in action. Let prayer be done. Amen. Let prayer be the mandate. Let prayer be the mode of operation. There is no demons that is so powerful that cannot be defeated in prayer. And listen to this. When you're on your knees or when you bow in prayer, that is the highest you can go in contact with the master. I love speaking in tongues. I love shouting. I love singing. But when you're sincerely talking to God, there is your zenith. There is your highest point. And the devil is doing everything possible to stop you from reaching that point. Because he knows that once you get there, you're going to win. If you're dealing with a sickness in your body and you can touch Jesus when you get there, you're going to win. Because prayer is that victory. We, let, we dealt ex exclusively with that last week and we said that was one weapon in your arsenal. Now the medical professional people, they know that you don't only carry one instrument as a, as a professional, you carry many. You carry one for testing the temperature, one for doing the pressure, and I won't say any more unless I get in trouble and say, say nonsense. <laughs> That's how you know your limit, you know. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. And I realize the vast, vast, uh, the vast panoply of medical person here today, so I don't want to get in trouble, but I at least know two. <laughs> Amen. But I can talk about the carpenter who carries a whole bag of stuff. Hammer, screw, screwdriver, everything. Why? Because he meets many problems. And he's going to be able to handle that. I say that to say that God has given the child of God tremendously powerful resources by which he can defeat the enemy. Satan, you can't win. You can't win. For last week we talked about them. We say there's a power of prayer. Then there's a power of a godly lifestyle. Then there's a power of praise. And there's a power of faith. And then there's a power of hope. The power of truth. You have to come to church every Sunday. God give me strength to hear this one, hear them unfold. And you can't make it log on. But this week I want to talk about the power of a godly life. You can win by living a godly life. Sometimes you cannot see a word. But your godliness will speak for you. Sometimes you cannot, words are limited, but just by living a godly life, by having the right deportment at the right time, demonstrating the right attitude, you win. So the subtopic this week would be winning by living a godly life. The power of a godly life. Someone shout the power of a godly life. The power of a godly life. I know in a world of secular humanism, world of materialism, moral breakdown, conflicts, immorality, drunkenness, sexual deviance, lawlessness, perversion, political correctness, unbelief, disrespect, rebellion, and all the rest of vices that you may come up with. You may say, preacher, can someone live godly in a world like this? I understand. When you turn on the television, you look at the news and you see what's happening, you wonder, is there godliness anywhere? When you read the scripture from the book of Hosea, Hosea chapter 8 and verse 7 that says, They soar to the wind 
and they are now reaping a whirlwind. The generation that we live in now is the most rebellious I've seen in my time. Tell the truth. Praise the Lord. The most disrespectful we have seen in our time. Praise the Lord. It seems that there's no, they, they shoot you for anything. Why life is more valuable than human life? Because they'll protect the species. They'll protect the, the bird. They'll protect the animals. They'll protect whatever. And they'll drag you to jail if you do certain things against animals. But it seems that you can kill a human being and walk away. This is the age in which we live. And some people say it, it's, it's gone. And true, the Bible says in the book of St. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 12, it says, because iniquity abound, the love of many wax cold. And people tend to think, well, we're just going to get used to this. And we're all going to hell in a handbasket. But I say no. In Jesus' name, I say no. I declare in the Holy Spirit, I say no. The Bible is clear. In the book of Revelation chapter 3 and verse 4, it says, Thou hast a few names in Sardis who have not defiled their garment, and they shall walk with me in white. I want to delineate today that not everybody is doing wrong. Not everybody is living ungodly. Not everybody is following materialism or immorality. Not everyone is buying into this, uh, this corporate uh, uh, situation of sin and lawlessness. There are righteous people living on the earth today. People who are destined to live right. People who are determined, who are intentional to live right. Well, I know you can point out so many of them, even many of my colleagues who are not doing the right thing. But I'm pointing to myself. By the grace of God. I am determined and destined to live right. And I know that there are those who will point to every Christian and say, Oh, you're a hypocrite and you're a hypocrite and you're a hypocrite. I know that there are those who will do that. But when it comes to you, you know yourself. You can, you can vindicate you. Hallelujah. You can vindicate you. Praise God. You can pat yourself on the shoulder or in the chest and say, When it comes to me, I make a difference. So, devil, you're a liar. Not everybody is living wrong. Not everybody is going down the wrong path. There are few names in Sardis who have not defiled their garment. That's Bible. And if you cannot speak for anybody, speak for yourself. Shout for yourself. I'm living right. I'm walking pure. I'm doing the best I can. Praise God. Amen. And the Bible always, amen, exemplify this. As I said earlier on, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 4. Thou hast a few names in Sardis. Who have not defiled their garments. They shall walk with me in white. Not every police is bad. Not every soldier is bad. Not every pastor is bad. Not every church member is bad. Glory to God. Not every black person is bad. Not every white person is bad. Amen. Hallelujah. There are people who are still living for God. And we are winning because of it. Is, it is that restraint... It is that restraint that is holding back, that is bringing the soul to the earth. Hallelujah. It is that restraint, mother. It is that level of restraint that is holding back. There is holding back the tempter, holding back the enemy from coming. It is that restraint. Throughout the Bible history, God has elevated and put a holy junction on people in every culture. Who have made a difference. Hallelujah. Who have won by godly lifestyle. And I submit to you today. In 2022. There are people who are living right. And God has to make a holy injunction when it comes to them. And I'm not being facetious. There are times when God decrees evil. And God decrees judgment. But when it comes to, when, when you, when it comes to you. And your household, and your family, and your situation, because of the life you live, there has to be a holy injunction. Hallelujah. The Bible lift the wonderful teachings and the wonderful example of those who are doing right. Like a good teacher, we don't hold out bad behavior as the ideal. No. No. Like a good teacher, we hold out good behavior. 
we use good example for the class. A good employer, uh, employer holds out the good employees and they become employee of the month. Isn't that the truth? Good parents don't, amen, hold out the bad example of the child who may probably make a mistake. No, they hold out the good example of the one who's doing right. Praise the Lord. They don't hold out the exception. They hold out the rule. This is what is right. So the Bible makes it clear. In the book of St. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14, Jesus says, You are the light of the world. In spite of what's going on around us, you are the light of the world. You, my disciples, I'm depending on you to be the light. Not only to be the light, but to be the salt. Praise God. When it comes to you, there must be a holy injunction. Hallelujah. This is Bible. And many of you know that. But let me bring on some evidence to show you. In the book of Genesis chapter 6 and verse 8. The Bible says, the wickedness upon the earth was great. Doesn't that read like today? Today's newspaper. The wickedness upon the earth was great. Every imagination of man's thought was evil. Lord, help us. Please pray for our children. The television is wonderful. But even innocent television programs that we used to now becomes political porn. You can't even watch them anymore and you have to ask what gender is that one? What color is that one? What shape is that one? What political uh, affiliation? The Bible said the very thought of man then was evil. How about today? How about today? Yes, we are living in that same time. But let's go back to the text. Every imagination of man's thought was evil continually. And it repented God that he made man upon the earth. And God said in chapter 8 of Genesis chapter uh, 8, I will destroy man. I'm going to wipe them out. Mm. That was then. That was what God said. But in verse number 8, I read a beautiful expression. He says, but Noah. But Noah, but Noah, find grace in the eyes of the Lord. Evil was at his highest. Evil was reigning. But when God look out, God said, I'm, I'm going to make a change. I'm going to destroy man. But he looked and he says, Noah found grace. Godly life will find grace. It doesn't matter what is marked out. When a life is living godly, there has to be a holy injunction. It's like a car destined to crash. And that one righteous person in that car may even have uh, God apply an automatic brake. Why? Because you are there. Because you are there. Because Noah was there. God said, I'm going to destroy it. I'm going to destroy it. But when he came to Noah, God says, ah, I have to think a second time. Are you making a difference by the life you live in your family? Are you making a difference by the life you live in the group that you operate? Are you making a difference in the life that you live in your social sphere? Is it a complete annihilation or because you're there, God has to say, I consider my servant Noah. On that subway you're riding. You know how many times it was destined to be destroyed? Or because you were there? Because you prayed? Because you are living a righteous life? God spare it for your sake. But the question is, how long will this happen and continue? We'll talk about that later on. God saved Noah, his family, and the species of the animals. Why? Because Noah Dare to believe God and live a righteous life. But who taught Noah? One preacher says there was no Noah before Noah. So he had no example to follow. He must have heard from the Holy Spirit and knew that God spoke to him. And so Noah obeyed a voice. Many of you have more than Noah today. 
You have more than an hour. You have the scripture. You have good influence around you. You have those who are encouraging you. Praise God. Many of you have more than an hour. Some of you have gotten the warning over and over and over again. Repent, 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 repent. God's about to destroy and people just go on as if they don't really hear. But thank God, now our cause, a holy injunction. Praise the Lord. When it comes to you, and your family, and your household, and your contact, and your business, and your friends, and your marriage. God can put a holy injunction. The power of righteous living. When your lifestyle please God, you can become a life preserver. Noah became a life preserver. You may be the only one on that team that is saved. And I'm talking prophetically now. You can be a life preserver. You may be the only one in that house that is saved. And just by you being a prayer warrior, you become a life preserver. That ship that was destined to sail, to go, to be grounded, because you're there. Mm -hmm. You become a life preserver. The power of right living. The power of right living. A lone voice in the multitude, in the throng, can save a lot of people. I say it again, a lone voice of reason and righteousness in the throng can save a multitude. That's why the church is preaching this. That's why we are living this. The power of living a righteous life. Not everybody is doing wrong. Not everybody is, is a part of the whole network of evil. There are names in Sardis who have not defiled their garments. And you must, you must be the one to say, I choose to stand for God. I chose to stand for God. The power of a righteous lifestyle, amen, can be emulated, praise God, can be emulated. Some people, you never know this, but God teach you. You watch somebody who's walking right, who is living right. And determine in your heart, show me the way. Teach me how to love God. Teach me how to love my neighbor. Teach me how to pray. Teach me how to have a right relationship. You can walk in the footsteps of somebody. While salvation is not taught and caught, it's a personal relationship. But the Bible said, let your light so shine. And brother, when you see somebody shining light, gravitate to that light. Gravitate to light because not many persons have this. There are people now who are under great pressure because they are drawn into evil. They are sold into evil. They sell their soul. And they sell their soul. Praise God. They are sold into evil. But if the Lord has spoken to your heart, come out from among them. Touch not the unclean things. If God has drawn you today, if you hear the voice of God, harden not your heart. Because the reason why God is drawing you out, that you may live a lifestyle of righteousness. Oh yes. Let me caution you. It's not an easy life to live. Before I go in, you'll be You'll be misused, abused, cursed at, scorned, ridiculed. You'll say all manner of evil against you. Amen. All manner of evil, you're open, you're vulnerable. But guess what? God will defend you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God will be by your side because this battle, this life you're living is not for you. You could have easily well go out there and live it up like anybody else. Praise God. I watch her as the news reflected on her recently, 96 years old. At 20 plus, she took the crown. They bathe her, they surround her, they garland her, and she says, I'm going to give my life to defend the monarchy, no matter where or how long it is. I'm not preaching her as an example of, of any virtue, but I'm talking about her stability. I'm talking about her strength. I'm talking about all that she has been through. And for 70 years, she sat on the crown. I'm talking about Victoria, the queen. She sat on the, on the, on the throne, praise God, amen, as a symbol, as a status of, of stability. This world needs some people who are stable. Who will halt the ungodliness. Who will say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We make a vow to serve God. Until death we will serve him. 
Thy vow, O Lord, is upon me until I die. Thy vow, O Lord, is upon me until I die. Thy vow, O Lord, is upon me until the day when I die. I vow to serve him. I vow to live for him in the good times, in the bad times. And your righteous life is accountable to God. It's not easy. The Bible says, yea, everyone that lived godly in this life must suffer persecution. I don't want to let you think it's a bed of rose. But guess what? You're still winning. Because Jesus is on your side. You can't lose because Jesus is on your side. Hey, you can't go under. Hallelujah. As long as you stay faithful to him. Because Jesus is on your side. Consider Noah. As I said, he stopped that, that, that devastation for his immediate family. He stopped it for even for some members of the animal kingdom. The life you're living now, the righteous life, the pain you're bearing, you don't know who you are travailing for. I want to say this in the spiritual realm. The burden you're bearing now, the life you're living now, it's not for you so much. It's beyond you. You may not see the reward in your lifetime. But hundreds of thousands of people will be birthed because you dare to hold on and live right. You dare to hold on and live right. You dare to make a difference. No one ever saw us. No one knew nothing about us. But he lived faithful in his generation. And the Bible says it, by his example, praise God, by his example, he condemned the then world. People who were living all kinds of way by the example of Noah. They were when they when they look at Noah, wow, can't look straight at him. His light is shining. Hear me good. Some people will hate you, not because of you personally, but the light that's shining out of you. So keep shining your light. The godly light that you're living. There are some people who will not want you on their block, not want you on their street, not want you in their company. It's not about you. It's because there's a light shining. But you can't apologize for living for God. You can't apologize for living right. Let me call another witness. Let's consider Abraham for a while. Chapter 18 of Genesis. And don't forget we are dealing with the weapon of a godly life. There was no Abraham before Abraham. He was just Abraham and God spoke to him. Abraham, get thee out of thy country, out of thy kindred, unto a land that I will show you. And the Bible says Abraham obeyed God. Ah, oh God, he never saw the Jewish race that is now occupying Palestine, Israel. He never saw the millions of Jews who are now over the world. But in that simple little, amen, Haran village, Abraham obeyed God. Abraham obeyed God. Listen, if you can't obey him in the little he gives you, you're not going to obey him in the big things. If you can't be faithful to him in the little things, when the big thing comes, you'll not be faithful. And that's why probably he's holding you back. So you can learn that, that if we, when little comes, you can obey him. Abraham called of God. And God said in the book of Abraham, Genesis chapter, chapter 18, he says, Shall I not tell Abraham what I'm going to do? I'm talking about the power of a righteous life. Abraham had a nephew whose name was Lot. And Lot chose to live in Sodom. Lot chose. A time came when Abraham and Lot were going on well, but the cattle, is, the, the, the increase was so much. And Abraham gave Lot a choice, and Lot chose to dwell in Sodom. Ever heard the word Sodom and Gomorrah? I don't want to use the word God, Sodom anymore, but we still see scripture. Lot lived in Sodom. And there came a time when the wickedness of Sodom was so great, God decided to destroy Sodom. And guess who was there? Lot was there. And the relationship between Lot and Abraham, this family, this nephew. But God went and spoke to righteous Abraham. He says, I'm going to destroy Sodom. I'm going to destroy Gomorrah. 
But Abraham's righteous life pleased God. And God put a holy injunction. Let me say, like Noah, your, your life is pleasing God. God will put a holy injunction on the destruction because of you. Let me say it again. Do not be afraid. Do not be fearful. Pray for your children. Pray for your friends. Pray for your enemies. Pray for those who despitefully use you. Because your prayer and your righteous life can put a holy injunction on God's wrath because of them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. While Lot was having fun, Abraham was praying. While Lot was, having, was living it up, Abraham was praying. That's why the church can't afford to go down the path. We have to keep praying. When everybody's throwing stones, you have to keep on living for God. You have a job to do. Tell somebody you have a job to do. You have a job to do. Praise the Lord. There are some invitations you have to decline because it's prayer time. There are some parties you cannot go to because it's prayer time. There are some functions you've got to say no because it's prayer time. There are some invitations you've got to refuse because it's prayer time. Why? Because lives are at stake. I'm talking about Abraham now. Lives are at stake. Lives are at stake. And if you're careless, and if you're careless, and you're there partying and doing all kinds of things, when it's prayer time, you're exposing those whom you're supposed to cover. Say, bless Pastor Reed, church. Say, bless, the bless Sister Reed. Bless Pastor Reed. We take our job as covenant leaders seriously. Somebody say, but you don't even take vacation. Praise the Lord. It's not that we cannot, but we rather pray than party. We rather pray than party. And I'm not saying that those who take vacation, they're wrong. But I'm just saying you don't know the call that God has placed upon our lives. You don't know the call that God has placed upon our lives. I say it again, you don't know the cost of the oil in this alabaster box. Some people can do it. Some others have to stick by it. Amen. Job, I come back to Abraham, but Job, Job had said, listen, I have to, have, while my children are out there having a good time, I have to fast and pray. Church, you can't afford to follow them. Praise God into hell. You have to be the restraining force and pray and pray and pray and live right because your righteous life can save nation. We come back to Abraham. Genesis chapter 18. God, Abraham was at a point in his life where his righteous life caused God to enter into a plea bargain. Amen. Yes. God says to Abraham through his servant, I am going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm going to rain down fire and brimstone. Can you imagine Abraham hearing that from God, he went to work like a good defense attorney. God, you can't do that because there are righteous people in the city. And because of the relationship between God and Abraham, God started to talk to Abraham. God says, Abraham, if I find 50. Abraham said, Lord, there must be 50 down there because I know Lot is there. His wife is there. I know uh, children and I know he must have influence upon others. Glory to God. So, so Abraham was counting on the influence of Lot. And he says there must be 50. God says if I find 50, I will not destroy it. My reference here is in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 18. So if you want to follow and read, it's okay. But I'm just abbreviating. I'm just summarizing for you. God says you find 50. Abraham said, well, well, when he came to 50 and God agreed to 50, Abraham said, wow, things are bad because if he, that means, Lord, let's, let's renegotiate that terms, Lord. How about 40? God says, if I find 40, I will spare the city. I'm talking about when your life please God. God will, you can negotiate with him for the life of others. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. 
Help, Lord. Help, Lord. Hallelujah. If I find 40, I will spare it. And when God agrees, Abraham said, mm, something must be wrong. Nay, Lord, Abraham says, what about 30? If you find 30, will you destroy it? God said, if I search through Sodom and Gomorrah, and if I find 30 people, I will save the city. Understand carefully, brethren, that when your life please God, you can negotiate. Ah, you can, God will hear you because God says, I'm going to tell Abraham. Amen. Verse 19 of chapter 18, he says, I, for I know him. That he will command his children, his household, he will after him, and they will do justice. They'll do justice. If I find, if I, if I, if I, I must tell Abraham what I intend to do. And they begin the negotiation. Hallelujah. Not 50, not 40, not 30. And Abraham, again, like a defense attorney, let's renegotiate the terms of this Lord. If you find 20, will you destroy it? And I'm sure at every given call of the number, Abraham was saying, maybe, 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 just got to, I got to get it right. But every time he calls the number, God says yes. And Abraham knew right away that he was in trouble. So he got to 20. And the Lord says, I will spare it if I find 20. The negotiation continues. How about 10, Lord? How about 10? If you find 10 righteous there, would you spare the city? I believe there must be a, a decrescendo in the drum roll. And God says, yes. If I find 10, I'll spare the city. Hear me, good church. We are living in a time of devastation. But the righteous must be righteous still. And the righteous must remain at the point of negotiation, at a point where we can talk to people about their soul, about God. The righteous must still remain holy and at a point where they can say, God is still right. We cannot sell out. We cannot fold. We cannot fold. Somebody has got to say, Lord, you have to spare the city. If there are 10, would you destroy it? Let me tell you something. Be careful who you hang out with. Be careful who you hang out with. Be careful who has your ears. Because I'm sure that while Lot was having a good time, Abraham was negotiating. Somebody is praying for you. And you cannot go farther beyond the, than the, the reach of somebody's prayer. Right now while you're pitching a fit, Somebody saying, Lord, please help. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the other side is, why right now while somebody else is pitching a fit, you better pray. Because your prayer can be the answer. You might be that one to save that nation. So you can't stop praying. Somebody's praying for you. And you ought to pray for somebody. Praise God. Because the weapon of our warfare is not carnal. Hmm. I believe with all of my heart that the restraining force that we are now seeing in our nation is because the Abraham, the church is here. Amen. Say what you want about the church. Do what you want about the church. But I believe, and I'm not just talking about this church. I'm talking about the body of Christ. The restraining force that you're now seeing is because the church is here. Millions of people, billions of people are praying and they are living right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And you can count yourself, praise God, as a praying child of God. As long as you're praying right and living right, you can say, I am in the number. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. The church, the praying saints, the praying mothers, the praying pastors. The praying Christians, the right living members, the right living brethren is a restraining force against the evil of the land. Let's take a quick census. 
do you believe we are, live, we, are, we, are our, we are in the 47th precinct in this location. And there are probably about 110 of us in here, maybe, if not that much. Can you imagine if we were all gunmen and gunwomen? Oh, my God. Can you imagine if we were all marijuana smokers and, and crack users? We'd have given them a hard time, wouldn't we? But God has changed us. We are no part of the solution. We are part of neighborhood preservation. Hallelujah. Our light is shining. Glory to God. People are seeing Jesus. We operate in Christian school. Young men are being saved. Holy Ghost filled. Praise God. We are sending forth the gospel. So we are part of the solution. Thank you, Lord. The power of a praying church. The power of a right living congregation. The power of a right living brother or sister. Let's stretch this out. You may be listening to me from your dorm room. And you might be the only one in that dormitory save. You are the salt. You are the salt. You may be watching me and you are the only one in your family who is saved. You are the salt. You bring sanity. You bring hope. Glory to God. You bring hope. Praise God. Your friend group might have three. And you are the only one that says, Jesus, you bring hope. Your life has power. Without saying a word, you are giving grace to that environment. If you don't believe it, then go the other way. I'm not asking to go the other way. You cause a holy injunction. And boy, they would have said some words, but because they see you, they have to stop. They have done some things, but because you are there, they have to stop. They would have said something, but because you're there, they have to stop. They would have involved in certain behavior, but because you're there, your light brings an injunction. Praise the Lord. Respect and reverence is brought because you're there. Just your presence. Some years ago, we printed a few buttons called I Make a Difference. Young lady went to a job for an interview, and she wore the button I Make a Difference. And she told me, Pastor, the, the interview went well. I said, why? I said, the boss, the, the prospective employer spent no time asking me about the job. He just asked me, what difference do I make? You become the conversation. I make a difference because I will not cheat on my time. I will not curse. I will not abuse you. I won't misuse you. I'm polite. I'm respectful. I understand protocol. I know how to come to work early and leave on time. I make a difference. Holy injunction. Teacher in the classroom can depend on you. As a teacher, I know that. Yes, kids are going to be kids. But there are times you can leave some kids in charge. Because you know when they come back, they'll set the example. Church, say Amen. Some people will violate the rule, but I hold injunction. Praise the Lord. You may grow up in a family where the only one saved. Mommy can trust you to leave you with the other one because they know that you'll abide by the regulations of the house. I know I'm speaking right. Hallelujah. Yes, I had some big complaints sometimes because, oh, why me? Why me? Why me? I can count. Mommy said, I could count on you. And I cannot tell her not to, not to count on me because, you see, that's my nature. I'm saved. Somebody say, I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. So when I get into the environment, I make a holy injunction. I make a difference. Listen to me carefully. We are, we are, we are surrounded by choices every day. But you must choose to understand that you're carrying a weapon greater than an M16. Greater than an atomic bomb. It's called a weapon of a clean life. For when you show up with a clean life, no demon from hell can stop you. When you show up with a clean life, gates are open for you. When you show up with a clean life, opportunities come flowing. When you show up with a clean life, doors are open. Our enemies fall. Giants fall. When you show up with a clean life. Oh, when Esther, when Esther presented herself before the king, praise God. The Bible says, Esther told her people, you go fast, you go pray. But if I'm going and if I perish, I perish. And the scepter was held out to her. 
Listen to me. Sure enough, God, God will give you favor if you live clean. A godly life will stop the enemy. A godly life will provide a holy injunction. It is for such a time as this that God has uniquely prepared you. Let me speak into your life. If you are saved, if you are living right, it is for a time as this that God has uniquely prepared you. Let no one fool you. You are there for a purpose. You are there for a purpose. Your potential is uniquely prepared for a time as this. Oh yes. I feel that in my soul. Glory to God. You are uniquely, strategically prepared for a time like this. Grab the opportunity and don't bow at the feet of compromise. Don't sell out your righteous life. You don't have to join the group. You don't have to compromise. You don't have to be a part of the crowd. Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to stand alone. Yes, a righteous life brings a holy injunction. Don't lose your salt. I want to speak in your spirit. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. We are living in a time when people are trying to, you know, there's a thing where uh, you, 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 if you can't damage it, then compromise the weakness. That's a good law, good deem. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that. Good defense lawyers use that strategy. Who's here doing law? You know, they can't, they can't, all, the only defense is to impeach the witness. So when you impeach the witness, then the whole case is thrown out. Let no one impeach your witness. Stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. Live a righteous life. There's a famous case that was uh, tried in California some time ago about who killed who. You remember that case? And boy, they had some good attorney and the attorney went to work. Let's go find out. Let's go back and look way in this person's future and see if he ever make a racial statement and bring it up. And they found the right, the one racial statement. And because of that one racial statement, the whole case turned on that. The devil's a liar. Live right. Live right. When you live an uncompromised life, your weakness cannot be impeached because you're living for God. I'm challenging you today. God has positioned you uniquely for that position. The woman you, the godly woman you marry is a blessing. The godly man you marry is a blessing. The godly righteous business partner you have is a blessing. Glory to God. Don't underestimate the power that you have. Starting a business and God send you a Christian business partner. That's a blessing. God give you godly parents. That's a blessing. It's not a curse. It's not a curse. It's not old fashioned. It's not obsolete. It's a blessing. Many wish they had godly parents. Go down the border and take a census. Many wish they had godly parents. Righteous God. Ask Esther. Ask Joseph, ask Daniel. The Bible says that Abraham played with God and came down, Lord, I couldn't find five. And the entire city was destroyed. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. And even in the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, when they were going out, read the story. Lot, his two daughters, and his wife. And as they were heading out, Lot's wife looked back. She remembered all the things that were attaining to them. And the Bible says she turned a pillar of salt. Don't let the righteous life that you're living, don't look back. Don't look back. It's one way forward. It's one way forward. I showed you Abraham. I showed you now. But I want you to understand that in as much as their righteous lives can bring a holy injunction there comes a time when they cannot save you. Let me say it again. Before I get to that, let me remind you that you have an opportunity. If you're not saved today, if you don't know the Lord today, you can be your own adjutant, your, your own advocate. Your life can speak for you. Oh, but I don't have someone praying for me. Well, right now you can start praying for yourself. 
Praise God. Oh, this can be the start of something exciting. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that those who believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You may be the only person coming from the Christian vine. But you can start a new generation today. Ah, you can sign up today and you can say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send a holy injunction in my life and the life of all those whom I know. You can start today. Bible says he comes to seek and to save that which was lost. Accepting Jesus Christ as a personal Savior and Lord is the beginning of a holy life. And you can start a new generation. You can be the Noah. You can be the Abraham. You can be the Job. Praise God. Today can be the first day of your new life. Genesis chapter 30 and verse 33 Laban is talking to his uncle. His uncle was about to do something very underhanded. Let me tell us something. When you live right, people can't trick you. Your righteous life will speak for you. This is what Laban says. So my righteousness will answer for me. In time to come, when it shall come to my hire, my righteousness will speak for me. There are times when you can't even defend yourself. But your righteousness. Someone say your righteousness. Your integrity, hallelujah, will speak for you. Praise God. At that appointed time, God will show up. And based on the life you're living, he will send angels. He will send battalions of angels. Hallelujah. And he will vindicate you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because of the righteous life that you live. But I want to turn to another portion of scripture. In as much as I talk about the righteous life. And others that have an impact. And thank God for you who have Christian mothers and fathers. Christian church praying for you. Christian wife. Christian husbands, God bless you. You are being a source of light. But there comes a time when that will not help you. And I want the Bible to speak for itself. Ezekiel chapter 14. I'm going to read it in your hearing. Even though the time when deliverance was wrought to these people because of their association... When I was growing up as a young boy, I had an aunt, and boy, she was so saved. When they preach about the rapture and the coming of the Lord, I always said to myself, if ever the rapture comes, I want to be near my aunt. Because she's not going up before me, I'm going to hang on to her dress. That's before I knew better that there comes a time when you must stand for yourself. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account of everything. As I said earlier on, some time ago in the message, there are some things it's better for you not to have heard it. Because once you hear it, you're going to be judged by it. And that's why we have ought to always say sin is a reproach to any man. But righteousness exalts a nation. And if you do sin and sinful activities and, and you haven't repented and God comes, you're going to go to hell. But if you repent, praise the Lord, God will throw his arms around you and say, welcome into my kingdom. God will save you. Praise the Lord. And so we talk about the corporate, the injunction. But let me read to you Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 14. Let me take from verse 13. The word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then I will stretch out my hand upon it. I will break the staff of bread thereof. I will send famine upon it. I will cut off man and beast. In other words, when things get to the height, I am going to destroy. But look in verse 14. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they should deliver but 
their own soul by their righteousness, said the Lord. I'm declaring a time will come when the church door will be closed. Sermons will be no more. Messages no more. You have got to depend on what you know and what you believe and what you accept. Too late. Mercy gone. And judgment come. There is coming a time when there will be a cut off point. No more church. No more preaching. No more Bible. Judgment come. Pastor can't save you. Mama can't save you. Evangelist can't save you. Sister can't save you. It's going to be your own righteousness. The Bible says that when all these things happen, even though Noah was there, Noah couldn't save them. Daniel was there. Daniel couldn't save them. Job was there. Job couldn't save them. And the Bible is so clear in verse 16 also. It repeats the same concept. Verse 16 of chapter, chapter 14. Though these three men were in it, as I live, said the Lord God, they shall not deliver sons. Though these three men were in it, as I live, said the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. They shall only deliver but the land shall be desolate. Sons, in as much as I love my children, they have to accept their own salvation. I love my congregation. But there comes a time when you're going to face God yourself. I pray for you now. But there's coming a time when mercy will be gone. And judgment will take its place. What shall your answer be? Let's go to the next verse. Verse 17. Or if I bring a sword upon the land and say, sword... Go through the land so that I cut off man and beast. Verse 18. Though these three men were in it, as I live, said the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. It is a personal thing. It is a personal walk. It is a personal fate. Oh, I love the children. Especially the young ones. I see them. I pray for them every day. But once they reach the age of accountability, they have to answer before God. They have to answer for the sins. And Job said it in chapter 27 verse 5. God forbid that I should justify you till I die. I will not remove from my integrity. Samuel said it also of Israel. God forbid that I should sin against God in not praying for you. But the reality, my friend, is that each man, each woman, each boy, each girl must give an account for every deed that's done in your mortal body. You don't have to panic. You don't have to worry. Jesus died so that all your sins can be forgiven. And you can boast today, if you accept him, you can boast and say, I want to live a righteous life. So I want to save my one soul. And those around me, I want to present a holy injunction. But if you are not saved, if you are not saved, if you don't know the Lord, there's no guarantee. And the Bible declares, what shall it profit a man if he gain this whole world? Have the greatest bank account, the greatest accolade behind your name, and the greatest thing that one can have, and you're not safe. You're lost. But I have good news for you today. Because of Jesus, you don't have to be lost. How do I do it, you ask me? You simply believe in your heart and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And for the rest of your life, he will lead you. And you can establish a godly lifestyle. This godly lifestyle is an antidote to sin. This godly lifestyle 
is a weapon that no demon can stop. This godly lifestyle is one in which you can walk in victory. I am walking in victory. The child of God is walking in victory. Why? Because I wake up this morning determined to walk in the way of holiness. Hallelujah. I want you to clap your hand for the Lord and give God the praise. I want to summarize as I close. How do I establish a godly lifestyle? First of all, if you're already walking godly, I congratulate you. I commend you. But if not, accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. I was a preteen when I made that decision for myself. Many arrows have pierced my soul since then. But at this age, I'm ever more determined to live for Jesus. So you can begin by accepting the Lord. Secondly, you can have a constant contact with him through prayer, through Bible reading, through genuine Christian fellowship. You can have a constant contact. And third, you can be intentional about living for God. You can say, listen, I don't care what anybody does, what anybody says, I am living for God. You can make that vow and you can keep it. And here the last thing I'll say and I close. God says if I shut up heaven, if I command that no rain will fall, and if you call upon me, I will hear and I will answer. It's a personal thing. Could you stand to your feet? It's very personal. You may have friends, you may have lovely neighbors, you may have some uh, uh, ferocious enemies, but no one can stop you from serving God. Abraham was surrounded by enemies and friends. So was Noah. So was Job. But they caused a holy injunction. In this New York City metropolitan area, we are in the throes of evil. But you can make a difference. Spirit of the living God, I come to you right now and I thank you for your word. Thank you that the holy life can make a difference. Make a difference in our community. Make a difference in our world, in our family. We can impact others. But Lord, above and beyond all of that, I thank you that you have thrown out the gauntlet and you're saying that we too, every one of us can sign up for that life. Because you died for us. Because you gave yourself for us. We can say yes. I'll make a difference. In this hour. Touch some hearts. Enter into some heart. Make a change. Make a change. Lord somebody that you had. Will to destroy. Because of the lifestyle. I come today in mercy. I come as a pastor. And I plead mercy. Somebody to whom you had drawn the sword for destruction. Because we are here. The church plea in mercy. Somebody who's going down the wrong path. In the name of Jesus. Listening to this sermon. Going down the path of destruction. I plead mercy to the Lord. I plead for that one. The two. The five. The ten. The fifty. Lord you can make a holy injunction. Thank you for the righteous life that's been lived by many on their jobs, in their homes, in the churches, Lord. That place of injunction. Honor their lives. Honor their commitment. But Heavenly Father, I speak to that one today, Lord, who is depending solely on Mama's faith, Daddy's faith, Grandma's faith, Grandpa's faith, Uncle's faith, Auntie's faith. May they come to know God that there's nothing that is so glorious and so right in the sight of God than to have a personal faith. For our sins are with us and we know them. And so Lord, I pray right now you'll touch some heart. Change some outlook. Change some life of living. And give somebody a right about start. In Jesus' name. Amen. This is not routine or ritual. This is reality. If you're here today and you'd like to come to this altar, 
and say, Pastor, pray for me. I'd like to pray for you. You know what your needs are. You know what's going on in your heart. Maybe you're on the verge of being destroyed. When you come to this altar and we pray for you, God can reverse that situation. I feel this in my soul. God placed this prayer warrior in your life for a purpose. You never know what you're going to meet tomorrow. Hallelujah. I don't want to scare anybody. I'm talking reality. Because I don't know what tomorrow may bring, I put my hand in the hand of the Lord. Glory to God. Because I don't know what danger I face. Every time in prayer time, I seek the Lord. I remember as a young man in college, every semester I go home. Before First thing I do was to go to my little cottage church. And I throw myself on the altar. And I say, pray for me. Every time before I leave back for college, I go and I say to the, I say to the elders, lay hand on me. Pray for me. You never know what faith in God can do. The Bible says sin crouches, demon crouches, darkness crouches. And the higher you go, is the more you expose. And there is a devil at every level. Listen to me carefully. The higher you go, is a devil there trying to trip you up and bring you down. But if you trust God, fully trust God, and cast not away your confidence, God will lead you out. Do not be afraid. Do not be fearful. The same God that saves me will also save you. The same God that brings hope to the every nation will bring it to you. All you've got to do right now is to believe. Let's close our eyes together. Stretch your hand to this altar. Thank God for the covenant brethren who are here praying with us. Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this solemn moment. The moment when lives are transferred from life on from death unto life, from despair unto hope, from unbelief unto belief. Lord, your precious children walk to this altar, not to me, but they walk in response to the bleeding of the Holy Spirit. God, you know what lies ahead of this man. You know what lies ahead of this woman, this child, this boy, this girl. You know the trappings of life. Life is uncertain, but death is certain. Judgment is coming. And God, you have given us today the word, the word of eternal life that will save us. So I pray for this man. I pray for this lady, this young lady, this mother, this father. Lord, I stretch my hand to them today. You are God. And there's nothing impossible. There's nothing too hard for you. If there be any sicknesses in the body, you can heal right now by your nail-scarred hand. If they mark out evil against them, hallelujah, for destruction, you can turn around for their good. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. If there be scorpions, if there be famine, if there be pestilence, we plead the blood today. The blood to save. The blood to rescue. The blood to bring about a change. Lord Jesus, we believe today that you are the Son of God, that you will never leave us nor forsake us, that no one is beyond the purview of your help. And so this day I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over every soul standing at this altar. Hallelujah. None shall be denied because your grace flows freely. Save, transform, renew, give hope, restore, Heal, set free, and deliver by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Can you just say after me, Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I accept your word. I believe your promise. You are God. My righteousness shall speak for me. Your righteousness shall cover me shall forgive me. 
So now I confess that you are my Lord and I believe that you are my God. I take a hold of victory. I take a hold of victory. Let my righteous life defend me in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Would you clap your hand for the Lord? Ah, it's not by might nor by power. It's by my spirit set the Lord. God will do it for you. Where no weapon form against you shall prosper. God will do it for you. You walk in victory. You testify in victory. And you tell somebody what God has done for me. Nobody else can do it. You go back to your seat in prayer. Clap your hand. Thank you for coming to this altar. God bless you. If we don't have your contact, I'd love to have your contact. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have an infant child to be blessed. Would you please come forward? I believe in my spiritual journey, I have had the privilege of dedicating close to a thousand children or successful children. Well, my son just asked me for the microphone. So here it is, while we have this family come forward for blessing. Yeah, uh, praise the Lord and good afternoon. Um, really quickly, I don't want to take too much of your time. Um, I figured since it is Grandparents Day to announce that my parents will become grandparents. Uh, the yeah, so the date, the the date is December, January around that time. So I'll just keep my wife and I in prayer. Thank you. All right. Never thought about this. Where is Grandma? <laughs> Next door. She missed it. Thank you, son. Thank you, and congratulations on behalf of the church, the family. We look forward. Amen. Praise the Lord. Grandparent Day. Oh, glory to Jesus. Life come at you real fast. Thank you so much. Well, let's do one verse of the song, son, when mothers of Salem. Thank you. When mothers of Salem, their children brought to Jesus. The stern disciples drove them back and made them to depart. But Jesus saw the air they fled and sweetly smiled and smiley said, Suffer the little children to come unto me, for I will receive them and fold them in my bosom. I'll be a shepherd to those lambs, oh, drive them not away. For if their hearts to me they give, they shall with me in glory live. He said, suffer the little children to come unto me. Thank you for standing, praise the Lord. And they brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them and said, don't disturb the master. But Jesus says, suffer little children to come unto me. For such is the kingdom of heaven. God bless the little children. And we thank you, mom and dad and godparents and grandparents, for choosing to dedicate this infant here at this time. I'm going to ask you, mom, to tell us how you name her. What is her name? Nia Buckley. Her name is Nia Buckley. God bless you, little Nia. 
Amen. God bless you, Dad. God bless you, parents, uh, grandparents, and all connected. I'm going to ask you this question. In a moment, I will take baby Nia from you, and I'm going to present her to the Lord for holy dedication. But it is your solemn duty and your task as parents, godparents, and others to ensure that this is not just a symbol of presenting her across the altar, but that you'll do the best you can to ensure that if God were to call baby Nia to be another uh, evangelist to the world, to be another great soul winner, you will do everything possible to ensure that baby Nia answers the call of God. So I ask you this question, will you ensure that should the Lord call this child to be a world changer, to use her for the glory of God, will you make sure that this child gets everything needed to answer God's call? Yes. Amen. It's your responsibility also as godmothers, godfathers. You know, in our tradition, sometimes they just use godfather and godmother uh, frivolently. But I do believe with all of my heart that the responsibility of godparent is a serious one. In the event, suffer it not that mom and dad should pass prematurely. It's a responsibility of godparent to take up this responsibility and raise this child. Not to be a foster child, not to bounce from home to home but to be led for God and for his glory. That is your solemn duty. That's why mom and dad put you down and the church keeps a perpetual record. So when Nia becomes old and says, who is my godfather and my godmother? If you don't do your job, she's going to come and find the record and, and come for you. So godparents, God, grandmother, God bless you. We're calling on you to do that. Praise the Lord. Holy Father, in your majestic glory and honor, as an act of praise, we present this child before your throne. Lord, she's innocent of this world and its passion. She's innocent of all the things that go wrong in our world. But mommy has handed her to me. Now I hand her to you. Do, Lord, bless Nia Buckley. Keep your hand upon her, cover her life, guard her, strengthen her. Lord, allow the grace of God to rest abundantly upon her. Let no evil befall her. Whatever is marked out against her that's evil, you turn things around because we pray. From the cradle to the grave, be with baby near. Provide her good counsel. Good custodial care in her mother and father. Let provision be always on the table. Let her never go lack. Lord, when it's time for her to go to school, you guide her through every class, every area of study. Be God for her. I commend her before your throne now, Lord Jesus. I bless her. Bless her parents. Bless her grandparents, her godparents. And everyone that handles Nia, may they realize that this child is prayed for. I rebuke the hand of predators, rapists, gunmen, knife men, murderers. I rebuke them from her life. May she know a childhood of peace and a grown up years of honor and blessing in Jesus' name. Now, baby Nia, the Lord bless you and the Lord keep the Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you, darling, and give you his peace, both now and forevermore. Amen and amen. God bless you and congratulations. Amen. Well, thank you so much. Don't leave it, Minister Reed. Thank you so much. God bless you. Congratulations. I present you with this certificate to honor this day, but also a gift from the church for you and Nia and the family. Among this gift is a Bible. I know she's yet young, she won't be able to read it, but you can read it to her. And the best way of reading it is by living it. The best way of seeing her life is by living it. 
Congratulations. We are proud of you. Let this be her church. Let this be her church. God bless you. Go in peace. Well, Minister Reed, you weren't here just now, but we got shocked. You got, we got shocked. Your, your son just came up here and asked me if he could make an announcement. I told him yes. He said, well, before the congregation, he wants to wish us happy grandparent day because his wife is expecting a baby. So, you have to see, you have to stay for the whole service. <laughs> I, I, my, my mind go back to Minister Ruby Bennett. God bless her soul. When, the pre when his pregnancy was first announced, she would pray for that baby in the womb. Those who know Minister Bennett will remember. She never stopped praying. I think in that same tradition, even though your wife is not here today, we should pray for that baby. Amen. Raise your hand towards heaven. Lord, thank you for this announcement today. Thank you for this addition to the Reed family. I pray for a healthy, normal pregnancy and delivery. Thank you that this, on this grandparent day, this announcement was made. And so we ask you that you'll honor them. Bless this child. In the womb, cause this child to develop functionally, normally, and well. This was where the son was blessed and dedicated. So it's fitting, Lord, that even on this grandparent day, he honor us with that news. Our heart rejoice for them that they are doing things the Bible way. So we give you praise now. And thank you for every other grandparent. Those who are grandparent in the waiting and those who are grandparent already. Lord, give the wisdom of the years. Oh, it's a new generation, Lord. But you'll give wisdom to lead and to guide. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We look forward to having you this afternoon. Amen. Brother Parker, thank God for the miracle. You'll share it when we can. Now unto him that's able to keep us from falling and present us faultless for the throne of grace. To him be glory, honor, and dominion, both now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Rejoice in the Lord. See you at 6 this afternoon. Amen. To take a stand, not knowing I will lose some of my friends, but I'd rather I rather live right than in hell to lift up my eyes. All my God's children don't stand. Oh. oh, oh. Stand, tell somebody say you stand, then I will stay. Stand, holiness, stand for righteousness, and be counted among men that are shall reign with him. You stand, where friends are gone, stand. We're all alone and believe you shall receive his own hey, to take a stand. Not knowing I will lose some of my friends, but I'd rather, I'd rather leave right So give up my night. Oh my God, the children just stand. Oh, stand. Tell somebody say you stand. Oh, stand for holiness. Stand for holiness. Stand for righteousness. And be counted on a man that's away with him. You stand, your friends are gone, stand when you're all alone and believe you shall see his own yeah, stand for holy to stand for holiness, stand for righteousness and be counted on the men that shall reign with him. You stand, 
friends are gonna say. Oh, and believe you shall, and believe, and believe you shall receive, and believe you shall receive his own.